And the question that we get asked a lot is, can TAPS also happen at birth or after birth? Well, the short answer is no. It only occurs and develops during pregnancy, the time at which the donor and the recipient are still connected to the placenta. And the placenta is the problem, is the cause of TAPS. But um, we also get why this question is being asked because sometimes TAPS is uh, confused with acute peripartum TTTS. Acute peripartum TTTS is also a form of unbalanced transfusion in monochorionic twins. It's even more rare than TAPS. It occurs in one to 2% of the monochorionic twins. And what happens in acute peripartum TTTS is that there is an acute blood shift from the donor to the recipient through very large placental anastomosis. And we do not know why it occurs. Maybe it's uh, due to the fetal positioning or due to uterine contractions, but it happens during delivery. And what happens is that the donor uh, loss uh, lose blood very quickly, making it hypovolemic and acutely anemic. And the recipient, uh, it receives all that blood and becomes acutely polycythemic. Um, and in, this twin, in, the, in these twins, they are also pale and red, and they also have a very high hemoglobin difference. So it's uh, easily mistaken with TAPS. But that's why it's important to look at the reticular site counts, because in acute TTS, it happens really quickly, and both babies have, haven't been able to um, adapt the reticular site based on their anemia or polycythemia. So reticular site counts are normal, and reticular site count ratio is, uh, is, is around one, and not larger than 1.7. And on the placenta, you have to look at the placenta and check the color dye, and then you can see a large anastomosis and at least one arterial, arterial anastomosis. Um, which is large and which allow for a large transfusion. So one could ask, but if, if they are both anemic and polycythemic, why should we uh, distinguish between the two? Well, that is because acute peripartum TTTS and TAPS, they require different treatments postnatally. Acute peripartum TTTS is an acute problem. And mostly the donor has the complications. The donor is hypovolemic and acutely anemic and needs prompt treatment um, uh, with fluid resuscitation and acute transfusion. In TAPS, the donor is chronically anemic and is really uh, used to the, 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 the anemia and it's not hypovolemic, so volume is okay. So if you would um, give the donor an acute transfusion with, with, and also with lots of fluid, it can lead to cardiac failure. So you really should distinguish between the two uh, at birth in order to, uh, to give the right treatment. So that's why it's important to check for TAPS antenatally, but also to do this diagnostics. And there is a last thing that's also really vital to look at, and that's the placenta, but not the, the fetal side that we already saw, but the maternal side. That's the one, the side that sticks to the uterine wall. Um, and in TAPS, you can see a large difference in color uh, in line with the uh, color difference of the skin at birth. But in acute TCCS, the placenta is just equally colored. So we always say to, uh, to caregivers, uh, flip the placenta, look at the other side if you're doubting the diagnosis of TAPS. And if you see a large difference, then it's more likely to be TAPS and not acute period part in TCCS.